everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Welcome to my first lesson. Um, let me just say that this video has been pre-recorded, obviously, so if you need to rewind it or go over anything, that's absolutely fine. Um, so today we're going to learn about omnivores, herbivores and carnivores. Um, I really hope you enjoyed the video. So the first thing that you need to know is that every animal in the world has a particular diet or a particular set of foods that it needs to eat. Now this is really important because what this does is it makes up a food chain, but we're going to cover food chains in a different video. So there are three different diet types in the world. The first one is a carnivore, the second is a herbivore, and the third is an omnivore. So first we're going to look at carnivores. <laughs> So a carnivore, girls and boys, is an animal that can only survive by eating other animals. So it cannot eat any fruit, any vegetables, any grass, nothing like that. All of its energy has to come from other animals. And there are two types of carnivore, well two main types of carnivore. The first one is a predator and the second is a scavenger. So a predator is an animal that has to actually go out and catch the other animals to get its dinner. Let's look at some examples. There are lots and lots of carnivorous predators on Earth. Just a few examples of these are cheetahs, snakes, and lions. So a scavenger, on the other hand, does not go out and catch the food itself. What it does is it waits for the predators to finish the good bits and then the scavenger will go along and eat what's left over. Let's look at some examples of scavengers. There are also lots of animals that scavenge in the world. A couple of examples are the vulture and the carrion beetle. There are actually some animals that are predators but will also scavenge as well. Let's look at some types of animals that do that. A few examples of this are the hyena, wolves, polar bears, and hawks. So a lot of predators are what we call ambush predators. Now ambush predators um, can either camouflage really well or they can sneak up really quietly because remember the food doesn't want to get eaten. So let's see some really good examples of ambush predators. The stonefish camouflages perfectly to the ocean floor amongst the rocks and the corals. This gives it a huge advantage because when the fish are least expecting it, it will strike quicker than you and I can blink. Wow, did you see how well that stonefish could camouflage? Let's take a look at the snapping turtle too. The snapping turtle opens its mouth and wiggles its tongue like a little worm. The fish then thinks, oh, there's some fodder for me, swims into the turtle's mouth and bingo, the turtle has its dinner. So because carnivores need to be able to catch their prey and not let go, and they also need to be able to tear it apart, they need very, very sharp teeth or very strong jaws, like these. Just look at the huge, sharp teeth on this anglerfish. But some predators actually don't have teeth. Some predators have a little ridge or a wiggly jaw. Just like this bearded dragon. You can see it doesn't have teeth, but it has a little wavy ridge instead. Some carnivores have venom to help paralyze or stun their prey. Here you can see Licorice the scorpion with her sting in her tail. That's right girls and boys, some types of carnivore do use venom to help catch and paralyze their prey. So now we're going to talk about a type of carnivore called an insectivore. So an insectivore, some of you might be able to guess what it means from its name. It is a predator that only eats insects. So let's look at some terrific examples of insectivores. Just a couple of examples of insectivores are the praying mantis and hedgehogs. Okay, so now I'm going to show you all my carnivorous pets that I keep at home. And I'm gonna have a go at feeding some of them as well. 
Okay, so the first carnivorous pet that I have is Luigi. He is an axolotl and I can't seem to get a very good picture of him because of the reflection on the water. However, some of you might be able to see he looks rather a lot like a rock or he could be mistaken for a bit of wood or a bit of gravel underneath the lake. So that's his method of being a better predator is by camouflaging. You can see his little face there. Hello. So he looks very ready for his dinner. So folks, we are gonna see some live feeding now. So if you're not comfortable with that, just skip ahead. So I'm just gonna give him a little worm. This is a earthworm. And he should come up and grab it. You got it. Ooh, he says that was tasty. And I've not got two axolotls, that's just his reflection. <laughs> He's enjoying that. So he's gobbled up the worm. I've just put another one in over there for when he wants it. So axolotls don't just eat worms. They do also quite like shrimps and prawns. He will eat snails. They'll also eat smaller fish. He's now got his back to me. Thanks for that. So he is a carnivore, remember? So he won't eat any fruits or veggies, nothing like that. He is a carnivore and he is indeed a predator. Right, so now we're going to have a go at feeding licorice, the scorpion. Licorice is an Asian forest scorpion. And these will eat most bugs. Um, some scorpions, when they get really big, they might eat larger prey. But um, I'm going to give licorice a little cricket. So again, there's some live feeding involved. So if you don't want to watch it, just skip ahead. I'm just going to throw the cricket in. Now, it'll probably take a little while for licorice to find it. And also, scorpions prefer to hunt in the dark as well. So, I don't think I'll be able to get a video of licorice catching the prey today. But you get the idea. And of course, if the scorpion's prey is really big or particularly feisty, the scorpion will give it a nice sting to stun it and then consume it. Okay, so this is Spitter. She is a Brazilian white knee tarantula. She's only a baby though. She's only about the size of a 5p at the moment. So I'm going to see if I can feed her a nice tasty insect. Right, so I'm just going to put the cricket in. Oops. Let's see if she catches it. Oh, I think the cricket's gone into the burrow. Really sorry, girls and boys. The cricket has gone into the burrow. So Spit has gone down to have a look for it. So just like the scorpions, these prefer to hunt in the dark as well. So she's probably going to catch it later on when we've all gone to bed. <laughs> right, so this is Black Beauty. She is a Brazilian black tarantula. I'm just going to pop a cricket in for her. Let's see what she does. Oh, she caught it. Did you see that? So tarantulas have venom in their fangs that are underneath their body. And what they do is they pierce the insect or whatever it is they're eating and they inject the venom. And what this does is it makes the insect paralyzed so it can't move and then they chew it with their special mouth parts. So now we can see Black Beauty using her fangs to chew the prey. And the venom as well turns the inside of the prey into a milkshake. And then the spider will slurp it out through its mouthpiece. Right, so now it's time to talk about herbivores. Right, so a herbivore is totally different to a carnivore. An animal that is a herbivore can only eat plants and plant material. So here are a few examples of herbivores. A few examples of herbivores are stick insects. 
koala bears, and caterpillars. Because their food tends to be in such plentiful supply, some herbivores grow very big, just like this buffalo and the elephant. So when we talk about herbivores, there are actually four different types of herbivores, four main types of herbivores. The first one is called a frugivore. A frugivore is an animal that feeds almost exclusively on fruit, vegetables and roots. An example of this is the pachnoda beetle. The next type of herbivore is called a granivore. A granivore is an animal that feeds mostly on seeds and grains. An example of this is the fox squirrel. And the third, a nectivore. A nectivore is a creature that feeds on the nectar from flowers. An example of this is the Australian painted lady butterfly. And finally, a folivore. A folivore is a creature who feeds only on leaves. A creature who does this is a leaf insect. So now let's feed some of my pet herbivores. Right, so the herbivores that we're going to feed first are some of my millipedes. So we've got ivory millipedes, we have the Tanzanian pink foot as well. And there's probably one or two hiding somewhere. So for these, I'm going to put in some cucumber. They absolutely love it. I think that's probably their favourite thing to eat. And you can see there's another ivory millipede down there. So millipedes are not only herbivores, but they're what's known as a detritivore. So a detritivore is an animal that eats the detritus and the soil. So all these leafy bits here, oh sorry, um, and all the little bits in the soil, the little bits of wood, um, that's what they consume as well. So the next ones that we're going to feed are the little pachnoda beetles. There's just one there, he's feeding on some banana. These, remember, are frugivores, so they are an animal that eats fruit and vegetables mostly. Um, so I'm just going to take the banana out and give them some mango. He's enjoying the banana so much, I just can't take it off him. Um, but I've put a nice bit of mango in there for him. Um, it doesn't matter that the fruit's a little bit rotten because they actually like fruit when it's overripe because it tastes a lot sweeter. And you can see him there chowing down on some nana. So another herbivore that I'm going to show you is all my stick insects. I've got about 12 stick insects in here at the moment um, and as you can see they're very very good at hiding, they look just like a twig, that's the idea, so they don't get spotted by any insectivores that might want to gobble them up. And these leaves are just bramble, that's their favourite food. Um, so stick insects are of course a folivore, um, which is an animal that eats leaves. So just in case you couldn't see any stick insects in their house, um, because they are very hard to see, I've just got a couple out to show you. So this one is a Zampro stick insect here. She's not fully grown yet, but she will get bigger. There she is. So she looks just like a, a twig, doesn't she? And then I've got another one on the other side. This one is a male Sungaya stick insect, and he looks just like a twig as well. And stick insects are folivores. So if you remember, a folivore is an animal that eats leaves. I've also got my lovely leaf insect to show you. This one's called maple. She is a giant Malaysian leaf insect. Um, she's still only a baby though. Hang on, let me just see if I can get a good view of her for you. Here she is. So you can see she looks just like a leaf. That's what she's trying to do. She's trying to camouflage so that the insectivores that might want to eat her can't see her. 
So Maple is another folivore like the stick insects. Um, her favourite foods are bramble leaves and oak leaves. So before we move on and talk about omnivores, I want to first mention detritivores to you. So a detritivore is a type of creature that lives on the floor mostly in the forests and places like that. And what it does is it eats the leaves, the wood, the rotten things on the floor that nobody else really wants to eat. Now detritivores are really important because what they do is they actually clean up and eat all the old things and the rotten things that nobody else really wants. And by doing this, they actually clean up the environment. Not only do they clean up, but when they poo, that actually makes new soil for the plants and the flowers to grow. So let's look at one or two of my pet detritivores. So the first pet detritivore that I want to show you is Tweedledee, my domino cockroach. So what these do is they scuttle around the rainforest, minding their own business, and what they do is they live amongst the leaves and the rotten wood on the ground. Now, what they do is they like to eat all the rotten leaves and any fruits that might have fallen down from the trees. So they're really important in cleaning up um, their environment. And his colors are actually to warn predators away. He's trying to look like a poisonous beetle, but he's not poisonous really. So you can see him there. These are incredibly fast, so I think I'm probably going to pop him away now. So another detritivore that I wanted to show you is one of my giant flower beetle grubs. Now I'm not going to pick him up because he has huge jaws. I don't know if you can see them on the front there, or you could. But you can see he's actually eating the soil right now. So that's what detritivores do. They eat the soil and the leaves that they live in. And this is their food. Can you see his big teeth munching through it? Now when he grows up he will transform into a beautiful beetle that will be a frugivore. So now last but not least we're going to talk about omnivores. Right time to talk about omnivores. So an omnivore is a creature that can eat both plant and animal matter. Very much like a human, you know, we can consume meat and animal products, but we can also consume fruits and vegetables and things like that. That being said, most omnivores can't actually eat grass. That's only really a herbivore's food. It's also said that omnivores have the best chance of survival in the wild. This is because if one particular food source is running low, generally there's usually something else that they can eat instead. So let's look at some examples of omnivores. Just a few examples of omnivores are rats, hermit crabs, and dogs. So just like a carnivore, an omnivore can hunt for its food for some prey, or it can scavenge as well. Take a look at this really cool video. A fantastic example of omnivores scavenging is this really great video from National Geographic. It shows hundreds and hundreds of hermit crabs and coconut crabs completely taking apart a pig carcass in the wild. This took less than a week for them to finish. So now let's feed my pet omnivores. Right, so I'm just going to prepare the um, omnivores food. So I'm going to get two little bowls. These are for the hermit crabs. Here I've got some turkey mince that I cooked earlier on. I'm just going to put a little bit of that in there. I've also got a little oops, bowl for my um, rainbow crab as well. He's going to have the same. So some turkey for protein. I'm also going to give them a little bit of cucumber because remember they are omnivores so they like veggies as well. And here I've got some mango. I'm going to leave the skin on because hermit crabs oops, quite like to um, pick at their food. So they quite enjoy tearing it away from the skin. I'm 
And also I'm going to put some eggshells in here because calcium is really important for hermit crabs and lots of other animals. So I'm just going to put some in their bowls. And then for the cockroaches, I'm just going to feed them these leftovers. So here are Pingu and Millhouse. They're a bit upset with me because I've just disturbed them. The bigger crabs are all hiding in there, in the den, being very antisocial. So let's give them their dinners. So I'll just put one bowl on this side for the little crabs. Now with my hermit crabs, I always put two bowls of food in just because there is five of them and I wouldn't like them to start fighting over food. Oh yes, they're very upset with me. Oh, hello. Millhouse is coming to say hello. Probably just excited because there's food. And hermit crabs have an amazing sense of smell, so they'll be able to smell that food already. Hello there. He wants that food. <laughs> Go on, you can have it, it's for you. So Pingu decided to go for a dig, but Millhouse has decided to have some mango. Millhouse is my greediest hermit crab, that's for sure. <laughs> Are you off? See you later. So I'm afraid there's probably not much chance of us seeing Vinny today. Vinny is a rainbow crab and they like to stay underground. They're quite antisocial. So you can see he's built loads of little tunnels here. So I'm not going to disturb him. I'm just going to pop his food in there for him. For him to eat later. Okay, so now we've got the hissing cockroaches. So I'm just going to give them that little bit of cucumber. Some mango. And remember, these are omnivores. So they like um, to eat animals as well. So I've just got these little fish flakes. And these are made up of lots of different types of shrimps and things like that. So there's loads of protein in there. And that's one of their favourite things. So they'll um, snuffle that up later when it goes dark. And there they all are. There is five of them. I think one of them's hiding under there. Yep. There she is. Okay, so they're quite a shy creature. So I'm just going to leave them to it now. Right, so our final omnivore are my baby giant snails. Now, lots of people think that snails are herbivores. This isn't the case. Snails are actually omnivores. Snails have even been observed eating dead mice and dead millipedes and even dead snails. Okay, everybody, so that is the end of the lesson. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you found it educational. I hope your children have as well. I hope you've learned something from it. Um, if you have got any questions at all, or if your children have any questions, please just leave them in the comments for me and I will get back to you. Um, obviously, due to the COVID restrictions, this is the way I'm gonna do my lessons just for now until I can come and see you in person. Um, so like I said, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you do want to watch another one, um, I'll be uploading my next one um, in a week. So next Thursday at 11 o'clock. Um, so again, thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you there.